part of human history and human society. And it's, it's this universal cultural phenomenon that exists in every society across the globe. And yet it's often not seen for all that it is and all that it can be. It's often regarded as sole form of entertainment, a pastime or a hobby. And the people that view theater in this way only do so because they're completely oblivious to all that theater is and all that it can do and all that it does for the people involved and for its audiences. Now theater helps us understand all that it means to be human. It has the ability to show us the best and the worst sides of human nature. It teaches us about ourselves and about our minds and about the minds of others and it tells us about the environments and the situations we live in and how that affects us and um, affects others around us. Now humans are social animals and we want to belong and we want to communicate face to face. And ever since human beings first work, walked on the earth, we've been this way. And so there's something so innately human about, about theater and the liveness that theater possesses. The energy in live performance is indescribable. You're completely in the moment for the length of a performance as both a performer as an, as and an audience member. And it's, a, it's essentially this practice of mindfulness. Now something that's becoming more and more prominent within um, theater today is its cultural variety and reach. Theater helps us understand people from cultures and from pr perspectives other than our own. It's this cultural space where society examines itself in a mirror. It's this sort of laboratory in which we can study the problems that face our, our society each day and attempt to solve them, building new worlds. Worlds that we want to see and take after, and worlds that we don't want to see, worlds that shock us. Now theater strikes the soul and the heart, and then it changes your mind. And that is what makes people get up off of their butts and change something, do something, action through action. And I'm a great believer in theater being a socially active force. Now I'm an IB student, and I study theater as one of my higher level subjects. And next year I'm going to university to study theater. Now when I tell people this, I get two, two sort of general responses. The first is a sort of change in expression where their thoughts leak through their eyes and the mouth and the position of their eyebrows where they kind of say, well, that's interesting. But you just know that they're the, of the opinion that theater is not, uh, theater is not a, a promising career choice. And the second reaction is, oh, that's so awesome. You want to be in movies and things, like an actor. Like, guys, theater is so much more than just acting. And it's so much more promising than some people think, think, especially today, in this day and age. As the world gets more and more polarized, the need for a viable, portable model of communication, expression, and mobilizing, reconciling action is becoming more and more of a necessity. And the idea of Reconciliation through theater is specifically important in today's society. Now there's this current project that I myself am taking a part in. It's called Monologues Across Agency. And it's structured as verbatim theater. And this, this is theater that uses the words of others, raw, personal, true stories, as the basis for a theatrical piece. And through this, dialogue is opened and understandings, are, are understandings and awareness and perspectives is achieved. And um, this project, Monologues Across the Agency, it consists of 28 testimonies from unaccompanied Syrian refugee children. Um, and it, it, it hopes to expose the audience to all the different challenges that these children have been through, all the challenges that they still face in society today, as well as highlighting their hopes and their dreams and their passions. And it's a part of a bigger project, It Could Be Me, It Could Be You, which is an awareness project um, about refugees and human rights using theater as the medium. Now this project is a powerful example of contemporary theater being used today as a social tool for reconciliation. The refugee crisis is a worldwide topical and current issue that most people are only exposed to through, through the lens of the media, which is more than often subject to sensationalism. And through theater, audiences worldwide are being informed about the realities of this crisis at a deeper, more innate level, straight from the refugees' perspectives themselves. Now, speaking of the media, technology today has altered our assumptions of cultural consumption. 
Thanks to the World Wide Web, we believe that we can get anything we want whenever we want it and have it practically delivered to our doorstep. And there's these expectations of personalization and customization that are implemented within our relationship with the internet. However, the live performing arts have set venue times, set curtain times, and inconveniences such as travel and parking and time. And now what is it going to mean in the future when we ask someone pay hundreds of dollars to come watch a performance when people are so used to downloading things on the internet 24-7 for less than 99 cents. Now these are some enormous questions for people that work in this terrain. And today, in this world, theater is competing against this instantaneous, customized marketing world that is the internet. And through this, it's becoming misjudged. For the real beauty of theater is, is that it's live. And the effect of that liveliness is unquantifiable. You cannot reduce its effect into statistics or figures. Watching a Broadway production or one of our very own black box theater company productions is completely different than watching something on Netflix, for example. On Netflix, you as an audience member are not held accountable. You have the space for distraction, for pausing, for playing, for chatting and snacking. Whereas in theater, you have got to be present. You take on the role of being a spectator, of being an audience member. In order to walk away from a piece of theater with something, you have to, it relies on, on personal connection and interpretation. No audience member from a show will walk away from the exact same show with the exact same interpretations and understandings. And that is where the beauty of theater lies. Theater exercises perspective expression and interpretation. Today's professional theater companies are becoming more and more defined by companies such as the Cornerstone Theater of Los Angeles. This was a collective of artists that after 9-11 brought together 10 different religious communities um, and made help, to help them to create their own individual plays as well as one massive play where they um, investigated differences between their faiths as well as commonalities. And this was an important step towards cross-community healing, or the Arab Puppet Theatre Foundation, a group that focuses their work on the refugee crisis, working with actual refugees, telling their stories through theatre, or reconciliation theatre that emerged post-apartheid in South Africa, where its focus was bringing together the separated groups and opening up dialogue between the two, using theatre and performance as the platform. Today's performers, like Rodessa Jones, works in a woman's prison, helping women prisoners articulate the pain of incarceration. Other playwrights and directors are working with youth gangs, finding alternate channels towards violence through theater. Others are bringing street kids onto the stage, allowing them to tell their stories. And I think that rather than being annihilated in today's world, the arts are poised on the brink of time where they are going to be more important than ever. Amongst all of the news that we are fed day in and day out through the media, the true reach of live performance is colossal in comparison. <laughs> With inevitable globalization and migration throughout our world and the cultural diversity that this imposes, business leaderships are going to depend more and more on emotional intelligence, the ability to listen deeply, to have empathy, to articulate change, and to motivate others. The very capacities that the arts cultivate with every encounter. So much of our world's toxicity comes from the collective draining of empathy. And generally speaking, we don't understand each other and we don't seem to want to. And theater forces us to empathize. It's a gym for empathy. It's a place where one can go to build the muscles of compassion, to practice listening and understanding and engaging with, with people and perspectives unlike our own. And so we have got to come together and seize and celebrate the power of the arts to shape our individual and our national characters, especially those within the youth, those who are all too often subject to the bombardment of sensationalism rather than raw, digestive experience. 
In a world where we live in a context of regressive immigra immigration laws, reality TV that thrives on humiliation, where the one thing that we hear most often in every train station, bus station, and airport is, please, sus please report any behavior to the authorities nearest to you. When all we are told to do is view, view our fellow human beings with suspicion, hostility, fear, and contempt, the arts and all that they do, all that they have the potential and capabilities to do, they call us together and invite us to look at our human beings with generosity and, and care and curiosity. And if we ever needed that, cap that capacity in human history, we need it more now more than ever. We're bound together, I think, not by technology, entertainment, or design, but rather by common cause. And theater is this industry that is working towards promoting healthy, vibrant societies, ones that ameliorate human suffering, promote a more thoughtful and empathetic world. And theater is a platform for extreme social change, reflection, and a medium for change. And I salute all of you as activists in that quest and I urge you to...